Hey, what's up guys? This is Eben here. And today I'm going to be walking you through a full real-time tutorial of a recent uh, portrait study I did of our good friend Obi-Wan Kenobi here. Um, I've had a lot of requests from people to go a bit more in depth with my explanations and process as far as how I put these uh, studies together um, and how I use the uh, brushes in my pack to uh, to get the the texture and the uh, the mood and the quality that I'm looking for. Uh, you know, creating a portrait study is, uh, in my experience, a bit more nuanced than uh, simply just trying to replicate what you have in a photo. Um, and you know, there are ways you can push your study of anything, not just a portrait, but of of any subject that you're trying to uh, sort of capture the essence of. There are ways you can push what you see even further to create a really quality product, something that stands out, that's not just sort of a, uh, a, gra a, a carbon copy of the original image. And so what I'm going to be going over today is sort of a step-by-step -step, uh, method for, uh, for taking a photo or something you're studying from real life and really drawing out uh, the important elements and sort of making it your own and enhancing it and sort of giving it this this nice painterly artistic flair that you really can't capture with a photograph. So as you can see here, I've uh, the first step is gathering my references. And for this one, I I just had a few different photos that I pulled on uh, pulled off. Uh, the internet that um, I was sort of uh, deciding which I wanted to use but I ended up just going with one as my main reference and as you'll see uh, I end up following that pretty closely for at least the first part of uh, this this study and um, basically you know I want to make sure especially because this is a well-known figure uh in almost a celebrity i mean ewan mcgregor is obviously a celebrity but the character itself is so well known and so recognizable that i really don't want to to take any chances with the likeness and uh if you are a uh, a character artist with uh or a, a, a comic artist or a cartoonist you may have more experience with capturing likenesses in a bit more of a dramatic way but Personally, coming from uh, a traditional painting background, I prefer to just really study a, a photo and um, really get those features nailed in properly before I sort of take my own licenses with it. So the first thing you'll see me do here once I have my reference up, and by the way, I'm using Pure Ref, which is a, a great program for, uh, for using uh, with Photoshop. Uh, I actually didn't use it for a long time and I just used Photoshop Windows, but it's it's much more convenient. Uh, you can sort of create a really big gallery of photo references to draw from in your window there. And uh, you can uh, set it so that it always stays on top of your, your Photoshop workspace. And that's what I've done here, so I always have that available there. And then the next thing I've done, which is key, is I've hit F to enter full screen mode in Photoshop. And that allows me to sort of move the canvas and zoom around uh, more freely. It doesn't auto center. So I can move my reference photo as well as my canvas very freely around. I don't have any, any other programs or icons or anything visually distracting uh, in the periphery. And I'm just free to focus on the simple elements of my painting process and by the way uh, I do talk about this a little bit in my short video on transitioning from transi transitioning from traditional to digital painting I have a video uh, about that on my channel where I talk a little bit about simplifying my digital workspace and you see that very clearly here I don't have any uh, unnecessary windows or anything open all I have are three main uh, uh, windows here I have my navigator, I have my color palette which I've pulled over to the side for quicker access, and I have my layers which I really don't even utilize that much in this piece, but they're there anyway, uh, and especially for more complex multi-layered pieces it's really good to have that there and have it uh, expanded enough so that you can see what you're doing. 
so the first step I'm taking is I've, I've made a new layer and I'm using my large uh, textured dry brush, my uh, thick, uh, thick dry brush here that's in the brush pack. And I'm just laying down some really key colors that I'm seeing. And uh, already at the beginning of the process, I'm trying to push them even more. You can see, um, you may look at this uh, photo reference and not see any green uh, in the mustache as I've um, already put down there. But I've noticed a little bit of it. I've noticed a hint and especially uh, I've noticed an opportunity to contrast that that uh, green with the red that's so pervasive in his hair and his beard and his clothes in the tone of his skin there's a lot of red and so i've seen an opportunity to create some more contrast here so i've pushed that that uh what would looks a bit more like a gray i've pushed it more towards red's complementary which is green uh so these this is the type of thing that um is easy to miss but i'm doing this throughout my process constantly i'm seeing small variations in color and texture and i'm just pushing them even further and that's really how you uh, can can make a study your own how you can make a piece really shine and really have some intrigue and vibrance to it so i'm also noticing that there are some grays that are present uh, on the the more shaded side of the face as well as in the hair and the beard and i'm trying to push those more as well i've noticed that in the reference photo uh, and this is really key to to understand because um this is this is clearly a staged photo and the lightsaber is added uh as in some at least in some uh ways uh, in cgi uh, after the fact and you can tell how that's expanded on because the lightsaber appears to be a very strong blue light source uh and yet what you see on his face is just this sort of faint glimmer of a um sort of a reflected coolish rim light which is you know nice for a uh photography studio but not necessarily what we want if we want to have this strong dichotomy between the warm light that's hitting the right side of his face and the cooler light that we're seeing from the saber. So I'm already trying to push that by keying in some grays and even some gray blues that I don't necessarily see in the photo reference on that left side of the face. And um, you also may be looking at this right now and thinking like this, <laughs> this is not even close to uh, a likeness at this point. And uh, I'm not really worried about that. My, my strategy is sort of a, a narrowing in from a very loose standpoint. So uh, unlike other uh, artists who might start with a very detailed and um, uh, accurate sketch at first, I'm going right into the paint and uh, my, my objective here is not necessarily to immediately uh, create accurate facial proportions and, and true likeness, but to get down the, the key mood elements and the key overall shapes. And so it's very messy, it's very loose, um, I'm not using any blending, uh, I'm not using any, like this brush that, I, that I've created for this pack, it has full opacity uh, at all times, there's no sort of uh, halfway point you can use for like shading, everything I'm putting down is a solid color. And so, um, that's, that's so I can make really deliberate color choices, so I can sort of make bold decisions and put them down. And, uh, and though it may look a bit um, extreme or, or sort of uh, <laughs> ridiculous at this point, I know that later on I can work them back as needed, or I can dial them up if I want to. But I like to start with a solid base of color variety, texture variety, and uh, that's exactly what this brush does. If you, if you can see, um, if you're looking at a high resolution uh, here, you'll also notice that uh, there are slight variations in color and value and hue that I've incorporated into this brush as well. So every stroke I put down is, is sort of helping me in creating this color variety. 
uh, without me having to think about it too much. So it's just one way of sort of automated my process and knowing that I want to have a lot of texture and a lot of color uh, variation as a baseline for this study, I've created a brush that will help me do that uh, really quickly and efficiently. So the next thing I'm going to be focusing on once I have uh, what I consider to be a good uh, good starting point as far as a color palette is I'm going to be refining my shapes a bit and this is when the uh, the image starts to uh, be pushed further in the direction of the likeness of the character and this is an important phase uh, of any study but especially uh, of a face uh, or a portrait study where you are using someone that is highly recognizable like this uh, even if it's not a celebrity or a character from a film or video game, uh, it could be a friend of yours or a portrait you're doing for uh, a family member or as a gift or something. Uh, you really want to uh, be able to capture their likeness and really the, the, the fundamental uh, foundation of doing that is being able to accurately portray shapes and value relationships. Okay, so I'm continuing to refine these shapes a bit more. Uh, another thing I've just dialed in uh, over on the left side of the face there that is not present uh, uh, so much in the photograph is that, that deep uh, red-violet color that I've put around the eyes and along some of the shaded areas of the face and that's a, uh, a deliberate choice I've made that um, that I know is going to come in useful later basically the um, I know that the uh, the saber on the left is creating a cool blue light source and I really like I said I really want to dial up the contrast between uh, that um, that cool light source and the warmer light source on the right side of the face and uh, just to create more interest in this piece and so um, what I've done is I've sort of made a calculation I know that the the blue light source hitting the shadowed uh, areas of the face uh, which are have a local color of a deeper red uh, that's going to create this deep violet in the shadows there so this is sort of uh, this is almost where there's a uh, a logic to artwork and to your color choices. You know, it's it's not something you're necessarily seeing, but you're kind of uh, you're kind of <laughs> executing this equation in your head, uh, a, a a color equation. Um, so you you bear in mind what the local color is, what those local values are going to be, and you uh, multiply that by the uh, the tone of the light source. And then you can push that even further just to uh, to develop things to the next level. So uh, something I've I've just done here as well as I've flipped the canvas, and you'll see that uh, happening throughout this process. Um, I do this uh, fairly frequently, but uh, there's a nice balance to be found here uh, between uh, doing it. Uh, not enough and too frequently with a portrait I think it's especially important uh, because often you're you're glaring uh, shape inaccuracies as far as the likeness of the person will be revealed really quickly when you flip it and uh, I know for me personally it's always a really uncomfortable moment because up to that point I'm like hey, you know this is pretty close and then I flip it and it's just, <laughs> it's just this monster is staring back at me and I'm like oh Man, I've got to, uh, I've got to do something about that. And then I take those those first few seconds before my brain adjusts to the uh, the canvas flip, and I make a mental note of all the things I'm seeing. Maybe it's just one or two things, but that will be very quickly obvious. And then I'll try to make uh, some quick uh, strokes, some quick uh, decisions about uh, just sort of like notes on the canvas almost to myself like hey I have to adjust that like I, that has to move over um, and so then from there I can sort of proceed with that understanding and uh, develop the those um, 
those notes further. Uh, the, the trouble sort of arises when you do this too much and you flip your canvas so much that your, your brain gets used to it both ways. And uh, that sort of inhibits your ability to properly see uh, objectively the, uh, the mistakes or the, the inaccuracies that you, are, um, that you are showing there. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a tough balance to find. I'm sure it's different for everyone, but uh, for me, you know, you'll probably only see this once every five, ten minutes maybe, um, and you certainly want to avoid flipping back and forth uh, too, too frequently for that reason. So another thing I'm doing here is uh, I'm using the warp uh, transform tool, which I I can't remember if, if it's hotkeyed to this by default, but I don't think it is. I've hotkeyed it to Control shift w uh, and I have my basic transform tools hotkeyed to um, variations of that, I think. I have my uh, regular transform as Control t my uh, free transform as Control shift t uh, or maybe that's uh, Distort, actually, specifically. And then I have Control shift w mapped to uh, warp, which are really the only three uh, variations of transform I use. There are other forms you can use, but um, I've never found too much use for them. But uh, warp specifically is a really useful thing you're going to want to have in your arsenal, especially when you're doing portraits, because people are, uh, yourself included, every human being is very sensitive uh, to, well, I mean, maybe not every single human being, but uh, generally, uh, we are very sensitive to um, facial proportions, especially around the eyes. And you can see me going in and starting to tweak that a little bit um, with some kind of uh, creepy results here. <laughs> um, but that's the thing. I mean, with anything else, if this was a, a flower or a, a water bottle or a, a house, uh, nobody's going to notice these, these slight uh, shape inaccuracies here. But you know, right around the eyes and the nose and the mouth. It's just the, those proportions are so uh, important to get right. And uh, so um, that's sort of the next phase here is I want to make sure my basic shapes are uh, accurately representing this likeness. 